Right. Hey guys, it's Brian Osborne, speaker and writer and curriculum guy from Answers in Genesis. I'm here in the boardroom at the Creation Museum with another fellow worker. I'll let him introduce himself. Hey there, this is uh, Gary Vaterlas. I am the director of curriculum development at Answers in Genesis. And so you call yourself the curriculum guy. I yeah. like that. <laughs> uh, we are here to talk about Answers Bible curriculum and to show you all the components that are in it. Let you take over. Absolutely. So this is kind of fun for us. We were working hard on this. Gary's been leading this up for quite a while. The first edition and the second edition coming out right now, yep. right? Yep. Available now. And uh, we are excited about just all the updates that have been added to the curriculum. Uh, we've heard so many awesome things about how God has used this curriculum in so many different churches around the world even. And we're excited to see what he does with the updated curriculum and all the stuff we added to it. So we're fired up about this. Got some great stuff to show you inside the box. This is the official unboxing unveiling you ready i'm ready all right let's do this Are so you ready you guys ready all right, all right. so we'll start with the younger age groups first let's go with the uh, pre-k okay pre-k through first this is pre-k box we're going to open these boxes and look at everything that's in there. and by the way as he's looking at this right now very quickly it used to be seven age groups for the okay. curriculum now it is six so this is pre-k through first instead of pre-k in kindergarten okay, first mm -hmm. so as we come in here we have our student take-home sheets should i open up all of these yeah, so uh, student take-home sheets, these are, these are what the kids take home every week. And on one side are puzzles for them and a memory verse and things for them to do. And on the back side is things for their parents to engage with them and to learn what they, what they uh, learned in the lesson and to ask them questions. And actually, they have these Jesse and Justin, or Justin and Jesse stories, which we'll get to in a minute. And then, Gary, how has that changed, the take-home sheets? How have they changed from last edition? Right. Before, they were uh, 11 by 17, four, like four-page, and now they're two-page. They're a lot simpler. Um, and also, another big change is we are now using, as we look at the memory verse here, the English Standard Version instead of the New King James Version. So uh, a lot of people are excited about that. So what else we got here? All right. We're going through. We have, oh, very good. All right. Downloadable, downloadable resources. Downloadable resources. So all of the in-class worksheets and uh, handouts and coloring sheets and class notes and lesson images and all kinds of things are available now. They're downloadable as PDFs um, so that you can print them out as you need them. The different teachers can use them as many as you need in each class. And so also with that, we also have downloadable songs. And before, we had uh, just songs to like common nursery rhymes and things. But now we actually have original songs that were produced by a local church here working with us. And so there's memory verse songs and lesson songs with, uh, that you can play for your class and they can learn and help reinforce the lesson. And with those songs, we have a couple different versions as well. Some of those videos have hand motions that go with them. And so it kind of add a kinetic element to the memory verse. So they help understand and learn those verses better. Some have don't have the hand motion, so you can choose which one you want. Also, I was going to say with the downloadable resources, Gary, if someone does not have access to Internet, can they still get access to the downloadable resources? Yeah, if you really don't have Internet or you don't like using the Internet, like my wife, uh, you can you can get a little USB flash drive that you plug into your computer and it has all the resources on it as well. So that's an option. Very good, very good. What all else right. we got? We got classroom posters. In every unit box, you have uh, classroom posters that go up on the wall. Here we have a Books of the Bible poster. We have a Seven Seas poster, uh, history posters, um, all kinds of different posters. Attributes of God. Attributes of God, yeah, we, yeah, we'll look at. The other grade levels have, have more posters than the pre-K. And then this is the teacher guide. This is a fat teacher guide. Uh, ten lessons per unit, and the tenth one is a review. So you review all of the things that you learned during the, during the, uh, the unit. And so what's great about these is all of our lessons are scripted, and so as you get into the actual lesson, the, we have a, a, like a say and an ask, and so any teacher can easily teach the lessons, even if they just come in as a substitute or they didn't have a lot of time to prepare. Um, there's a lot of uh, preparation information for the lesson preparation, what you need to do, what you need to print, what things you need to get ready. And one thing all of the t we've been hearing on feedback is teachers love this prepare 
to share. It's background information about scripture, about history, about apologetics, archaeology. And we've had a lot of teachers say that they learn as much or more than their kids are learning. Oh, yeah. I hear that a lot. Also, really quick, as we're looking at these lessons you're flipping through, um, if you'll flip back to where you have the instruction for the teacher on what to do, mm -hmm. you guys will notice if you look here, the come on in activities, lesson time, the other activities, lesson review games, story time, memory verse games. We've added a ton of games and activities as a coloring sheet for each lesson for the younger age groups. Mm -hmm. We've added a ton of that, so it really reaches those lower age groups. One of the things we heard often with the curriculum is that people loved it, they loved the content, but sometimes they feel it's too meaty for those lower age groups. So we give a lot of games and activities to connect it to those age groups and really engage them where they're at. So we're excited about that and we know that's going to be really effective in a classroom setting. So it should be good. Also, real quick, before I forget, I did want to show I just like this. It's practical. Mm -hmm. With the downloadable resources, teachers out there using this, you have this sheet in your box and it tells you, just look in your teacher guide and right there in the back is the code that you use on the website to get access to the resources. And to so, the songs. And to the songs. So you plug that in, go to the website. It's a plug and play, really straightforward, really easy. And then, of course, let's don't forget the flip chart for pre-K through first grade. People love this thing for a really good reason. Gary? This is the teacher's favorite thing. So for every lesson, we have a full-page picture here with the lesson on the back. So for a preschool teacher, you hold this up and you're teaching your kids and you can read the lesson right on the back as you're teaching it to them. Uh, you, ref you refer to all the things in there. Teachers love it. Kids love it. It really keeps their attention and it reinforces, uh, reinforces the lesson. So it's a great way to keep preschoolers really engaged with the lesson with a big visual. So we love that. All right, let's move on. Okay. We're going to go up to... Second, third grade. Okay. Does that sound good? Yeah, yeah. All right. Again, you have downloadable resources. You have, uh, this is something new. So for second, third, fourth, and fifth, we have what are called lesson theme posters. So each lesson, it's kind of like the flip chart, but instead of a big, a big picture, we have uh, a picture that relates to the theme of the lesson that reinforces what it is. And then on the back, is the lesson focus, the key passages that are studied, and then a summary of what the main points were, what the students are supposed to learn. And this is used both for teaching and then in for, for review. Yeah. In your review, review week, you take all 10 of these and you can review quickly what they learned during that unit. It's kind of a mini version of flip chart for the older age yeah. groups, in yeah. a sense. Yeah. Again, we have the student take-home sheets, like we did for the pre-K. So these are handed out every week with uh, an activity for the kids to do. We have the, uh, the, attributes of God. the Attributes of God poster, the Books of the Bible poster. And then also for the older kids, uh, we have memory verse posters. This is 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. And there's two memory verses per unit. So there's another one in there. Oh, this is a game board poster. And Gary, explain to the people why only two memory verses per unit. Right. So a lot of a lot of curriculum every week you're supposed they're supposed to learn a new memory verse. And most of the kids, if they do learn it, they just learn it quick enough to say it and get their candy or whatever. Which is what I did. <laughs> so we want them to learn it more in depth. So we take about five weeks where we go over the memory verse every week and they're learning it. And they, they, you know, it's going to be there longer than just. Absolutely. Yep, that's good stuff. And then again, the teacher guide um, with everything that a teacher needs uh, to teach successfully. So uh, we've had a lot of great feedback on, on the way that lessons are laid out. Okay, now we're going to go, we're going to jump to the older grade levels. So second and third and fourth and fifth are pretty similar. But when you get to high school, Actually, middle school, high school, and adults. And then, wait, wait, wait. Who's who's that guy? Yeah. This guy looks familiar to me. I didn't. I couldn't help but bring. Does that look familiar to anybody? I don't know. I'm just kind of wondering. No, I'm sorry. Maybe. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I really don't like that. <laughs> no, it's also, good. All right. Anyway. So for the older grades, we have the same thing. We have the uh, the teacher guide. We have the downloadable resources. We have the uh, classroom posters. Uh, middle school also has the uh, memory verse music and everything like that. And then instead of the take-home sheets, 
since these are older and you know those are kind of for little kids, we have a uh, a, st a student guide. Okay. And in the student guide, what's great is the older kids, they also get that background prepare to share lesson material with scriptural background and the apologetics background that they can read. Uh, they, they can take notes on all the passages that are being studied that week. There's activities where uh, they're asked to work in small groups and to answer questions and to deal with scriptures and to come back together. And then there's application questions at the end and, and a place to record prayer requests from the, from the class or whatever. So these, uh, these one comes in the kit, and then you can order more for as many students as you have in your classroom. And then also we'd add to, with the older age groups, there are PowerPoints for every single lesson. So you get the visual engagement, even for the older age groups, for ADD people like myself, even adults who love seeing the stuff visually, uh, we have that. And it's literally ready to go. It's downloadable. It's a plug and play. And that's a fantastic resource for those older age Actually, groups. Actually, the PowerPoint is available for grade two. Yep through adults, so only pre-K doesn't have the PowerPoint. And could you maybe explain to the people kind of the difference in, in the lessons when you go from, you know, first grade, second grade to the adult? I mean, they're same content, but we're, we're speaking to two different age groups or many different age groups, so how does it change as you go up? Right, so we, we, we call it synchronization, where each age level is studying the same basic topic, the same basic account of Scripture. But of course, pre-K and first, they're just going to have maybe one simple objective, learning objective for the students. They'll only read maybe a few verses, or some of it will be summarized in, in a, by the teacher. A little bit more for the elementary, and then you know, high school and adult, they're going to read more scripture passages. They're going to have more of the apologetics, yeah. archaeology, and history, and those things brought in. So. Okay. It, well, the great thing is, if you have kids in multiple ages, and if the parents are doing the adult, you know, on the way home from the car or during the week, you can uh, all engage about what you've been learning because you're learning the same thing instead of, you know, five different things from the Bible at the same time. So. And on top of that, to add to that with the parents, since you're learning the same stuff as your kids, but at a deeper level, you're equipped to engage them at that deeper level to answer their questions in regards to the topic. Now, you've been equipped to do what God's called you to do, which is raise your kids in the fear and admonition of the Lord. And so that's part of the curriculum. I think if you look even on our emblem, you'll notice if you can kind of zoom in right there at the bottom right-hand corner, you see the symbol there between the church and the home and the family and the father in the middle. The idea is to unite the family in the study of God's word. And the parents are equipped to do what God's called them to do. That's a big part of the curriculum. So one, one more thing uh, is our family devotional. So to help that, we give parents uh, a family devotional. And basically what it is each week, we're hoping that they'll sit down. It'd be great if you did it every night, but that's hard to do with schedules and everything. But at least, say, one or two times a week to sit down with a family and read through this. And what this is, is this is additional passages uh, going into more depth that you've been studying during the week, like this one's on the Trinity, and we look at uh, the triune nature of God and the impact that has on us and the diff how God is, has worked in our salvation, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And So these are things that... Um, Simple things. Yeah, well, that's a... <laughs> <laughs> but I love that, it. That's, that's awesome. A, that's a deep one, yeah. And the uh, curriculums will get into something like that. And so we praise God for that. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, we don't... We, we go into depth, yeah. definitely. We Absolutely. don't... It's not, it's not fluff and stuff, as they say. But, um, Praise God. But, but kids love it. Uh, parents love it. Um, we love making it. So we're excited about it. And I would encourage, especially the fathers out there, and kind of getting this together, that is so important, having that family time, leading that time to study God's Word. And we should recognize it's not going to be perfect. If you have kids or multiple kids, you know they don't have halos, right? And you sit together. If you can sit down for 10 or 15 minutes and kind of review the material, go over it, have a prayer time. Even if little Susie's hitting little Billy, stop that, you know, but get back to the curriculum. It does not have to be perfect, but the effort and the consistent effort to try to get into God's Word as a family will reap rewards, hopefully for eternity. And so we want to make that very practical, very useful, and that's what that uh, devotional is all about. Yep. So that's we a lot have of stuff. a website, AnswersBibleCurriculum.com. On there, you can see all of this stuff. You can read frequently asked questions. Yep. You can see the entire scope and sequence of all 200 lessons, what those are covering. Um, what else? 
Oh, you can see videos of this guy. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Introducing the curriculum. <laughs> give me back now. Yeah, yeah. Ones you can even show to your church if you're trying to convince them to, to, to move to Answers Bible Curriculum. Yeah, we are excited about the videos. Uh, there are four training videos on what the curriculum is about, how to use it, so you can pass on the vision of what this is about to your leadership. Hopefully they'll embrace that as well. Uh, we are so passionate about this because as a ministry, we feel that this curriculum is our ultimate response to the attack on God's Word today. Equipping Christians to defend their faith where this attack is happening so we can stand on God's Word and boldly proclaim the gospel. Amen? Amen. Absolutely. So with that being said, visit the website. If you've got any questions, hook us up on Facebook. Leave a comment there. We'll get back to you. And uh, hopefully you send a lot of emojis across there like Ken likes to ask for. And uh, all right, just blow it up. And then we'll get to that. A lot of thumbs up. And a lot of wows, you know, for that picture of Gary. Um, and, uh, but this is a good time. Uh, and, uh, yeah, check it out. Bye.